girls went missing two days ago. Where the hell was the Amber Alert? Because I never got one. I never saw one to my phone. I never got alerted about any missing kids. So where was the Amber Alert? This entire city is failing our black children. And that's facts. This entire city is from the top down. And everybody needs to go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Justin with Lights Out Radio. I hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right in. Um, I told you I was going to start doing these little one-topic videos, so I think that's going to be a permanent thing. Uh, and we'll just run that concurrently with the radio shows once those shows start in January, like I said, the first of the year, once all the holiday madness is done with, you know what I mean? Um, so this one, I've been sitting on this one for a little bit. I've been brewing on it. I've been talking to sources and stuff, people that I know in the area, because um, I know people all over the country, so, I mean, it, it's not hard for me to tap into a line, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so, I was talking to people, I was sitting on this story, brewing on it, looking at every angle I could, trying to get all the information I could, uh, but it's something that really bothered me, mainly because of the way that the media and politicians... And those fuckers, it's, I don't know, it's the way that they, like, turned it. You know what I mean? Like, all they spoke about was, oh, well, they did this, and, and, and they threw bricks at police, and, and, and like, a couple of uh, big city uh, news outlets started saying, oh, well, it's, it's, they started rioting because of the whole Black Lives Matter shit, and, and da-da-da-da, and it had, it really had nothing to do with that you know what i mean like it was a whole different animal like there are so many different little side stories to this and everything else so i'm gonna do a radio show on it we're gonna have some people on um do some interviews and i'm gonna get i'm gonna get to the bottom of what happened from people that were really there you know what i mean uh because the truth is a crazy motherfucker like i don't think you ever really get the truth in anything i think you kind of have to be smart enough to make up your own mind about it. I think everybody has their own version of the truth, whether they're lying or not. They they may think that they're telling the truth as far as up to their full ability, but it's only the truth from their perspective. And everybody's perspective is swayed in life, I think. But anyway, so regardless, we're going to do a radio show on this to get the interviews in, and, and you guys can really hear from people that were actually there, that were actually a part of the shit. Um, but I'm going to give you the quick rundown on it, and you guys can kind of decide for yourself, you know what I mean? I'm just, that's kind of what I what I do. I look at all sides, and I connect the dots, and try to put it together in a non-biased way. That's That's pretty much how I think on a daily basis. Like, I don't take one side over the other. I, I kind of blend everything together, because I figure that's where the truth is. It's in the middle, you know what I mean? So we're just going to jump back right into this. We're going to talk about the, uh, this is what happened in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in, at the end of June. So on June 21st, uh, two girls went missing, a 13-year-old girl and a 15-year-old girl. And a few hours later, later that night, um, the mom went to the cops to file a missing persons report, right? So the cops said, MPD, Milwaukee P- uh, Police Department, They said that uh, there was no real cause for them to put out an Amber Alert or think they're in any kind of danger whatsoever, which is, I don't know, they're probably better at knowing what's a true missing persons case and what's some kid, you know, fucking around, hanging out with his friends, spending the night places without telling mom and checking in. You know what I mean? they, They could be a better judge of that. But for me personally, having kids, um, having nieces and nephews and my friends having kids that I really care about. And from that perspective, from a human perspective, I would say any time a mom comes in to the cops, that automatically means that she's worried enough to check into it. You know what I mean? To take a look around, at least poke around a little bit and see if your services are required or not. Um, don't just kind of dismiss it all together. That, that's kind of shady to me. Anytime a kid is missing, I believe that's due cause for an investigation, even an Amber Alert. You know what I mean? Just put out an Amber, you put out an Amber Alert for every damn thing else. I get them at all hours of the night. Like, so why wouldn't you just put one out to be like, Hey, you know, Amber Alert, blah, 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 13, 15 year old girls are missing, blah, 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 blah. This is, you know what I mean? Just so people to help them do their job. You know what I mean? Like, 
they have confidential informants and all these other other informants and everything else that help them do their job. So why not actually something that's proactive and productive? Why not send out the, to the community, the you know, the surrounding area, oh, these two girls are missing if you know, be on the lookout kind of deal. But no, they were just like, "Eh, well, I don't think I don't think there's any kind of reason for us to deal with this, right?" So that was June 21st that they went missing. It was like in the afternoon. And then that night is when the mom went into the police department to file a, you know, a missing persons report or whatever. Now, fast forward to the next day, June 22nd, um, a guy gets word back to the mom that he saw the girls in a van roll up to this house, a specific house off uh, on 40th and Lloyd up in Milwaukee, right? And um, so he gets word back to the mom that, hey, I saw those girls in a van go to that house and supposedly um, this house is rumored to have ties to uh, to uh, sexual trafficking and human trafficking and stuff, you know, which there's a lot of, it's a loose term really if you think about it. Like prostitution is technically sex trafficking. But either way, it's no good. That's, I'm not, I'm not, you know, defending anything, right? Like I'm just trying to let, give you the bare bones of everything. Like... Sex trafficking is the same as prostitution, human trafficking. It's all tied to the same thing. So when you use it so loosely, it's kind of become a buzzword now. Like it's kind of just like an umbrella of everything, which it's, and then it gets in people's minds. It's a certain way, but you got to look at it in all functions and fashions. You know what I mean? But either way, so supposedly this house, uh, the dude saw the girls roll up to in a van um, supposedly this house had ties to sex trafficking or human trafficking or, or stuff like that. And, and according to police reports, um, the cops have been to this house multiple, multiple, multiple times, right? We're talking like 20, 30 times in over in like a year period or something like that. So anyway, so he gets word back to the mom that, Hey, I saw these girls, you know, roll up to this house in a van so the cops go to that block twice that night. Um, one on a trouble with subject call, whatever that entails. I'm not really sure off the top of my off the top of my head. But like I said, we're gonna do a full show about this with interviews and stuff like that. So we'll clear all that out there. Um, and a they went to the that block on a threat call. So anyway, in the midst of all that, they ended up searching that house that night and didn't find the girls. Okay. Now let's get to the meat potatoes of the story, right? So June 23rd, now all this is of this year. You can look all this up. So June 23rd, um, the mom, she finally, she's been trying to, you know, use different outlets and stuff for um, to help locate these girls, right? Or at least her daughter, because it's, it's two girls, but they have two different moms. All right, so let's, let's clear that up right now. And anyway, so the mom has been trying to uh, use different outlets and different ways to try to figure out where her daughter is. And she ended up uh, doing the find a phone. She pinged her daughter's phone to that same house that the cops searched the night before. She pinged the phone to the house, right? Cops got called at about 10 a.m. on June 23rd in the morning because people were starting to congregate around the house. And I guess word spread through social media that... uh that they had pinged the phone to that house. And so people started, you know, congregating, like, what the fuck are we going to do? Are we going to do something? Blah, 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 blah. And then people tried to break into the house to look for the girls themselves, and this is why the cops got called. So the cops searched the house again, and uh, they, they didn't find the girls, they said. They said they didn't find them, just like they didn't find them the night before. That was their quote, actually. It seems kind of heartless and cold to me, but who am I? You know what I mean? So then after the cops leave, after supposedly um, not finding the girls the second time they searched, people really started getting pissed off. Now, you got to understand the mindset here. We got we to gotta step aside from the story. You got to understand the mindset. Milwaukee is a crazy hub for missing children. Crazy. The numbers are crazy for a small. It's not a small city, but for a city of its size, the numbers of missing children are crazy year in and year out. Um, so needless to say, the crowd that had been congregating and growing and, and stewing and 
they started getting real pissed off, right, after the cops left and said, oh, they weren't here, they're not here now like they weren't here last night. So people started trying to break in the house again, trying to look for themselves. Now, during this, a shootout occurs. There's, a, there's an exchange of, of gunfire, right, between people trying to break in the house and people on the inside of the house. Um, so there's a little gun exchange. I think, like, three or four shots came, and then, like, six more came after that. And um, so there's a little exchange of gunfire there. Nobody hurt. Nobody hurt in this one. So now the cops come back, right, because of the shot spotter uh, activation, because of the shootout between the residents of the house and the people trying to break in to look for the girls. Now, if you don't know what a shot spotter is, uh, basically there's a, they're these little, um, what do you want to call them? They're a monitor, a sound wave monitor, and they're cued in tones for gunfire. That means they recognize, they're only cued to recognize the tones that gunfire come in, right? Different calibers and all that. And they're placed in different areas of cities, usually troubled areas, uh, usually, you know, the hood. That's usually where they're at, shot spotters. If you don't know what they are, you can Google them, look, in, look them up. Um, so basically, it's, it's like a bank alarm. So if there's a shot and that thing picks it up, it'll go straight. It'll activate and go straight to the police department and notify them, hey, shot spotter activation at this location. That way they can kind of pinpoint it to where, to where it occurred. You know what I mean? So anyway, so now the cops are back because of the shot spotter activation. And, you know, they're trying to talk to everybody and figure out what's going on. Everybody's really mad now. Um, they're start, starting to throw bricks and, uh, you know, different things at the cops uh, saying that they're not doing enough to look out. They don't look out for uh, for kids in the ghetto and, and stuff like that. And um, at this point, there's a video that shows people being removed from the house. Um, one girl goes to say that they're uh, little kids in handcuffs the the cops are, they backed up a van on the other side of the house the cops did and there's a video that shows people being taken from the house and put into the van and one girl goes to say that they're kids in handcuffs um, going into the van and uh, you can't really see that from the video but uh, that's what she says and uh, you can see, you can hear in the in the tone of the of these people's voices, they're not bullshitting. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just me, but that's what I read off of it. It's a lot easier to understand what's going on with the vocalizations rather than what somebody's saying. You know what I mean? Somebody could be lying to you, bold face, but you can kind of hear the tone that will trigger you to be like, "Yeah, bullshit." You know what I mean? So anyway, so in the video, their tones. Their tones kind of reflect what is actually going on. I got you. They should just let us whoop his ass, dog. Bro, I swear, if we rush their ass right now, they can't stop nobody. Oh, they done pulled the van up to the door so they could sneak a shit out. Hey, that's they sneak shit out. Shit. They sneak shit out, dog. Put that nigga on display. Put Show that, that nigga face, dog. Now. Show that nigga face. My shit got blurry as a motherfucker. Clear up, iPhone. Oh, they sneaking niggas out, dog. They sneaking niggas and bitches out. Look at all the motherfuckers coming out of there, dog. Hey, look at all the dog, dog. Hey, hell no. Hell no. That band on the police. They all in that van. It's kids coming out in handcuffs. Hey, hey, make way for the camera. Make way for the camera, man. They snuck these motherfuckers out of here, dog. Now, as you can imagine, things are really starting to get amped up, right? You got people throwing bricks and anything, any debris, anything they could find, they're throwing it at these police officers. And um, this is when another little shootout occurs. There's shots being fired in the crowd. Um, two peop three people ended up getting hit, um, all, all non-serious non injuries. Um, and then the crowd tried to block the dude... The, the the dude that they suspected of being involved in this human trafficking, sex trafficking ordeal, the crowd tried to stop him from leaving. He's in his car. They're trying to stop him from leaving. And um, he pulls off and, you know, 
another guy pulls out a gun and starts shooting at the car. I mean, this is some crazy shit going on. Like, nobody just starts doing this. No no neighborhood reacts like this for no reason, in my opinion. You know what I mean? There's not all these shootouts and, and shit all in the same morning. It, it's not even, it's not even, you know, afternoon yet. You know what I mean? On a, on a Wednesday. So anyway, so I'm going to show you that right now real quick. Um, this is, they tried to block dude off, the dude that they suspected of having these girls or being in this sex trafficking, human trafficking ordeal. They tried to stop him, tried to block him, and he ended up pulling off, and dude pulled out a gun and started shooting at the car. <laughs> So now, right after that occurred, we got riot squad. We got um, we got the we got the SWAT trucks rolling in. Um, it's basically an all out riot right now. Uh, there's people throwing, like I said, bricks and everything they could find at the cops, and the cops are using uh, tear gas and rubber bullets on the crowd, and just just complete madness. So the crowd starts going nuts. They end up circling back around the back side of the house. Let lighten a van on fire, a couch on fire, and then start lighting the house on fire. So the uh, the fire department rolls in, right? And people start throwing bricks and, and whatever else they could find at the fire department. I understand they want to let it burn um, because of the what it represents. You know what I mean? I can see that aspect of it. I can I can under I can understand that. You know what I mean? But there's no reason to be going after the firemen like that. Like, if, if you're mad at the cops because you don't think they, they do enough for your community, there are other ways to do it, obviously. They don't always work like we <laughs> like we know they don't. Um, bureaucracy, politicians, are, it's, it's all a bunch of shit um, the way it's handled nowadays, in my opinion. But either way, um, so the cops are starting to protect the fire department, you know what I mean? They're firing more tear gas, shooting people with rubber bullets and every damn thing else. And then um, shit gets a lot more wild. Uh, the crowd goes crazy. Uh, two cops ended up getting hurt at this point and having to go to the hospital. A firefighter had to go to the hospital. And then now at this point, um, they got the fire out and the crowd's kind of dispersing. Uh, people are getting bored with it or, or don't want to go any further with, with course that it's, <laughs> that it's on, you know what I mean? And uh, so everything's starting to calm down. The cops, the fire department, everybody ends up leaving. And then later on that night, the crowd reconvenes and totally sets the house on fire again. And, I mean, this time they actually set that thing on fire to burn, which, like I said before, I understand the wanting to get rid of what it symbolizes and everything like that, you know, rid your neighborhood of, of that kind of shit. But at the same time, you got to understand there's clues in there. If the cops are really going to do an investigation, that's where it would be is in the house. But I will say this, somebody went in the house before they burned it to the ground and found bloody children's shorts. Um, so that is that action and that find is what reignited the fire. I'm going to be honest. So they find the shorts, and they're like, nope. Bloody kids shorts? Nope. So they set it on fire again. So the cops come back again. 
This time, three cops end up having to go to the hospital because they got busted with bricks from the crowd. Now, the news sources, it's it's nobody really goes into detail because they don't know, which, you you know, watch the news. Read the news. You know what I mean? You can tell when they're bullshitting because different news places and different companies, what have you, they will they'll give different details and different versions, kind of like with the coronavirus. Masks work, masks don't work. Oh, you need to wipe everything off. Oh, well, maybe it doesn't last on surfaces. Like, there's so many mixed... Matter of fact, there's a there's a girl on... Uh, I saw on Facebook, she had a little video or whatever. I don't know what it was from. But she's acting like she's, you know, doing a government interview. She's like, oh, well, we're going to give you the rules on coronavirus. I don't know. Let me know if you've seen it. You know what I'm talking about if you have. But everything's so conflicting, right? That's when you know it's bullshit. So there's so many conflicting sides to this story coming from different news outlets that really make me look at it and say, man, there's there's shit going on behind the scenes. There's got to be. There's got to be, right? And then the way the media twisted it when it started getting a little a little attention and a little a little grind to it, the media twisted it. Oh, it's Black Lives Matter. They're you know being unruly, this and that. Like that's how they spun it so that w- it wouldn't get any more attention. And that shit bugs the hell out of me because in this instance right here, you see a community coming together. There's all kinds of different races. If you look at the videos, there's all kinds of different. It's mainly black, but you know who cares? Whatever. Like, but there's all these different races that live in that neighborhood that are on a mission to do good. So there's something going on that people don't just burn down houses in their neighborhood for no fucking reason. It doesn't happen. You've never heard it happen. If you have, I would love to hear the story. So later the mom, the mom is who finds the two girls eventually, right? Now they didn't find them in the house or anything like that. They found them blocks like, I think like four miles away, actually. It might have been a little less than that, but I think about four miles away is where they found the girls. So a lot of people started thinking, well, hey, when they pulled that van up to the house and started loading people in there, who's to say that, oh, well, we need to dump them somewhere, right? Now, there's no any kind of feedback from the from the girls. All there is is a police statement saying the girls said that they were never at that house, that they don't know anybody at that house, and all this and that. And which is all fine and dandy, but you got to understand, you got to look at it from the opposite perspective as well. Again, the cops are going to say whatever they need to to cover their ass, just like anybody else, just like anybody else. They're going to say what they need to to cover their ass. And that's just the way it is. But people, I will say this, people for years, I mean years, you can go back, you can go to Google right now, type in Milwaukee sex trafficking, human trafficking, and you will find stories upon stories So for years, people have thought that, well, maybe the cops are in on this shit. Maybe they're supplying cover. Maybe they're offering cover. Maybe there's all kinds of, if you don't think that type of shit happens, you need to bring your head up out of the sand. All right. You need to bring your head up out of the sand. This, (laughs) the government agencies that we have, you have no idea the tricks they play. If you do know, you know. So anyway, so the mom found the girls. And the police issued a statement saying that they had never been at that house. They didn't know anybody at that house and all that. Um, So it's just a wild story, right? It's just wild. Like, there's so many different contingencies. and, and, And what about this avenue? What about that detail? Like, it's just craziness. And like I said, like, originally, like, fresh out the gate, the local news outlets were like, hey, you know, the crowd comes together to you know, take on a sex trafficking, human trafficking house and la la la. And then it started, it started gaining traction. And then that's when all the national and big city news was like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's black lives matter causing trouble in the neighborhoods and they're going to the neighborhoods and doing this stuff now and la 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 la. And so, I mean, it's just suspect. The whole story all around is just suspect, but it's a crazy fucking story. And I didn't want it to fly under the radar. I know There's been a lot of distractions this year. There's been a lot of craziness, a lot of disinformation, a lot of disinformation from the people that we pay to protect and inform us. They're supposed to protect us. They're supposed to have our backs and they're supposed to inform us. And if you don't think that there's been a lot of disinformation from them this year alone, like you can forget the news and the media from politicians alone, craziness. 
So I understand all that. I understand it's been a crazy year. Me too, believe me. Uh, but I didn't want this story flying under the radar. I didn't want it getting lost in the in the internet wormhole that you'll probably never find unless you are looking exactly for it and you know exactly what to use as your searches. So I didn't want that to happen. And like I said, we're going to do a radio show about it with interviews and stuff like that. We're going to get the real down-to-earth story. Um, so stay tuned for that. You know what I mean? But I just wanted to touch base with you guys and let you know about this story I thought was crazy as fuck. So there you go. This has been an episode of Lights Out Radio. Just a short little clip, you know what I mean? You got any feedback for me, please let me know. Hit me in the comments. Follow us on uh, Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on follow us and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You know, God bless. I love y'all, man. And I don't I mean the universe. We want now nah, I'm gonna get into it since I started it. Alright, I'm gonna end the show with this right here. Me me and a buddy of mine were having this conversation actually, and he was like, Man, what's your take on God? And I said, You know what, man? I said, For anything, for any being that can create everything to go in perfect balance like it is. Like if you if you really think about it, there's an animal and a insect and like all these things are they do certain things in nature. They keep the balance. Like a like a car engine. Every piece does something that as a whole makes the engine run, right? And I said, Man, anything that complicated, there's no way our human minds can grasp that. You know what I mean? So I refer to God as the universe. It's it's the it's all the energy, the atoms, everything, the molecule, everything in the universe is God to me. You know the balance of it, the system of it. Every that's there's no way our human minds can grasp what God really is. Like why do we why do we choose to personify it? You know what I mean? Is that so? It's relatable. Or is that some way of helping us feel like we understand it? Who knows? But that's my little jump on that. Uh, I'm sure I got a lot of eye rolls and a lot of what the fucks, but that's just my take on it, man. If you want any more, if you want to have that conversation, we can have that conversation. You know what I mean? But anyway, so I wanted to tell this story. I didn't want it to get lost because I believe it is a beautiful story. I believe it shows all races, all colors. You can see in the video, man, there's all kinds of people in there coming together to fight something that actually matters, that they can actually change. You know what I mean? And I don't think that the powers that be liked that. I don't think they wanted us to, to be able to see that. You know what I mean? So there you go. We're going to do a story on it, an actual uh, episode on it with all that. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the next video, everybody. You guys be safe. Love you. Peace out. This has been Lights Out Radio. Yeah.